Hey, Dave Melinda here, Positive Polarity Podcast. Hope things are going awesome for you today. I am excited to be hanging out with uh, somebody that I met not too long ago, uh, Karina Kretschmer from ANSI and Associates. How are you today, Karina? I am fabulous, Dave. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Yes, I, we, we met on a Zoom call and like as the whole world is meeting on Zoom calls right now, um, you had some awesome stories, you had some great um, feedback, and so I really wanted to kind of dig into that a little bit. Um, today, the topic is business insurance 101, the basics, but we are going to get way beyond that. So um, before we get way beyond, tell me a little bit about uh, yourself as far as from ANSI Associates. What do you guys do? I love the fact that on your uh, LinkedIn profile, you call yourself an advisor. So tell me about that a little bit. Yeah, sure. Uh, thank you. So I actually, um, we provide business insurance. We provide personal insurance, obviously. Um, why I call myself an advisor is because we go in and we implement, we, we determine, we go through the risk. And what we do is when we meet, we ask these business owners, um, what, what do you do? Okay. What, do we, what do we need to put for coverage? And um, yeah, so that's basically, every business, no matter big or small, they, they definitely need insurance. Sure. Okay. And uh, we go in, we identify the risk and we, and the needs that they need for their type of exposure. Okay. So I think of it like, and again, <laughs> I think of it at sixth grade level. So I'm like super basic. So I define insurance as like a tool that protects my investment. Some, I have something of worth and I want to protect it. Now, obviously that's got to look different to different people. So when you sit down, and I think that's what, and, and I'll just talk about the elephant in the room right away to get it out there. When I sit down with somebody, I have this, I, I'm, I'm really guarded a lot of times because I'm like nervous that they're going to sell me something. And that's not just insurance, it's in life in general, you know, that they're going to sell me something that I don't need, right? I have a, let's say a $400,000 house and they're going to insure it up to 4 million or some crazy thing like that, right? So how do you build trust with people? Because if I don't trust you, Karina, I'm probably not going to, you know, move forward with anything. So how do you, you know, build trust in your business given the, you know, the climate of, you know, potential problems that are out there? So I'm just curious how, how you guys do that. That is an awesome question. Anthony Associates and myself build relationships okay. to build that trust. Um, I don't just like to go to someone, go to a business and say, I want to insure you. No, I want to know who they are, first of all. Okay. I want to know their passions. And then that gets them to open up. And then we build that relationship. And it could take anywhere between six months to three years, gotcha. sometimes five years. Okay. But yes, it's all about the relationship building. So what are some tips for if there's a sales professional listening, if there's somebody that's thinking of jumping into sales or, you know, they're, they're thinking about coming into our world of business ownership, whatever, you know, when you, when you, what are some of the solid tips that you could give on how you build trust? I mean, there's got to be like, is there steps that you take or if you are, you and I are meeting for the first time on a Zoom call or in an elevator or whatever, you know, where do you, where, where does, how do you start that trust piece? Uh, very, very great, great question. Again, relationships are all about getting into your community. Okay. Um, helping others. I absolutely love to help others. I mean, during this pandemic for the COVID-19, yeah. I am out there and trying to share Facebook feed on restaurants and bars that are open for curbside service. I am, I am actually purchasing gift cards, putting it on Facebook saying, Hey, I purchased this gift card for so-and-so from this business cool. to awesome. provide. Okay. It's, Great. it's that 
it's that information that you want to provide them and then also to go even further after you meet with someone and have a one-on-one one -on -one meeting yeah um i continue to to keep that relationship going by providing them with different articles hey i thought about you this is i just read this article and thought about you and i i thought it would be great for you to to read so that's cool. yeah that's yeah. what i do that's awesome and it's just funny because just this week so i don't know how to even respond to this but i just shot it out there this week on linkedin one of the guys that was on um, one of our Zoom calls said, just out of curiosity, Dave, what's your best mailing address? And I'm just like, oh, you know, because I work out of my house, right? <laughs> so I don't have this office. I don't have a P.O. box that I can hide behind. I mean, I'm going to give you where I live. So if you show up on my driveway, I'm going to be kind of irritated, you know. But it was interesting because more and more you're seeing that those personal touches. He obviously... He must have learned something from one of our calls and he was appreciative and now he wants to, you know, I'm assuming, hopefully he's not sending me a bill, but you know, you never know, right? But I'm <laughs> yeah, thinking, right. I'm thinking that, you know, he, he, he got value in something and so he wanted to, you know, say thank you. And again, it's not that I want that. It's that, you know, there's that personal touch piece. There's that involvement there, but there's also certain people that if you cross that line, you know, that can be a problem. I mean, my gosh, if somebody asked me my address and they didn't, I didn't know who they were, you know, it's kind of like asking for a credit card, you know, number without really understanding what they're going to do with it. So when you get involved with things, you know, I was looking, for instance, at your, your chamber involvement, mm -hmm. you know, so it seems like that's explain because everyone says the word chamber and I'll be the, I'll fall on the sword on this one. I don't really know what a chamber does and is. So you've had pretty extensive involvement in chambers. So what is that for us that, you know, pretend we know what it is, but really don't, what is a chamber? So a chamber helps businesses by um, providing different um, tools, I guess you could say, okay. um, discounts on advertising. Um, I'm actually, I was an ambassador for the Burlington Chamber for 16 years. Yeah. Wow. Um, that involvement was ribbon cuttings. That involvement was going to meetings once a month. That involvement was getting into the community and helping volunteer. Um, so we also have business after five uh, networking events. Okay. It, it is it is involvement, and what I did is when I met with someone that has a ribbon cutting for a business. Mm -hmm. I would literally go back to the office and write them a note saying congratulations on the opening and I hope you the biggest success and send it off to them because wow. it means a yeah, lot. Absolutely. It really means a lot to these business owners. So, yes. So emails are okay, but your preference is a handwritten note. Yes. Definitely. You know, we were on a call and I don't remember if you were on that call, but we were on a call. I was on a call and somebody in on the call said that they took a whole day one day. It was a Friday and he wrote 21 cards out to 21 different people. And he actually got 17 responses from those people. And there was, you know, whether it was a business thing, personal, whatever, he didn't get into much detail, but you know, that's where I think it's so cool is finding new and unique ways. Because again, you know, and I thought about this because one of my um, past clients ended up on the um, biz times as like a person on the go or whatever, right? And there's this picture. So I did the snippet thing. I sent an email and I say, hey, congratulations, you know, similar to what you were saying. Well, then I'm like, I'm going to take this a step further. So I found out like, how much it would cost to get the thing like framed and it was like 400 bucks oh, <laughs> I was like oh my gosh okay i love the guy <laughs> but you know what i didn't have the budget for that right but i mean right. it's so cool to come up with unique ways um to actually create you know that involvement and further those relationships um what other things do you do or ANSI? what other things do you guys do from that relationship perspective 
um, obviously, you, I just said the cards. Yep. It might not be just the card. It might be the actual article or okay. like you had said, you saw yeah. somebody in a newspaper, you clip that newspaper out, clipping out and you send it in the card. Right. Definitely. Um, we've been known to send um, just different gifts, um, some different types of marketing plans. Um, do you want to roll the dice with um, your insurance and take the chance? Oh, yeah. Um, you know, and send dice. Uh, sure, yeah. Sure. So different, different things, strategies to, to get that person to think about that. Sure. Yeah. Sure. So do you end up um, like brainstorming as a group and then trying to see what sticks? Hey, let's try this. Let's try that. I mean, where do you get your ideas from? So often our listeners are, you know, they're great at what they do. They're fantastic at their craft, their trade, whatever it is. But when it comes to, you know, trying to promote their business or grow their business, you know, they start to have a little bit of struggle there. So where do you, where's your think tank? Where's your you know, inspiration, where's your, where do you get those ideas from, Karina? And that's, I think, where a lot of people struggle. Um, networking. Okay. You will not believe how much networking I do. Okay. Because when I network, I network with people, other salespeople, and we throw off ideas all the time. And Dave, I have to say, I absolutely love Fridays. I look forward to Fridays yeah, to cool. be on your call, oh, well, your you. Zoom call. I, I've learned so much from that That's and it's awesome. been awesome. That's awesome. It's so cool to have 20 people on a screen and, you know, for the people that are willing to share, right? You know, yes. those people, it's like, man, I, I just, I love walking away with two or three things that we, we can try. Um, so yeah, I mean, and networking means so much to so many different people. And I've been learning for myself over the years to, um, I remember I joined an association from my last business years ago, and I made the conscious effort. I said, I'm not going to do anything but give to this association and its members for 18 months. And it was like, man, I, I look back and I'm like, that was such a huge commitment, but boy, did it pay off because... <laughs> You know, I, I always remember, and I don't know where I was, but I'll never forget a guy walked in, you know, a networking event and before internet and all that. And he had like a half inch of business cards and he handed me a half inch of his cards. Never met the guy before. Don't even know who he was. And he's like, hey, would you hand these out for me? And to him, that was networking, right? Because he's thinking, hey, I'm going to multiply. And number one, I'm like, okay, I don't even know who you are. I don't know. I, I couldn't even imagine giving somebody your card because I don't even know if I can trust you. Why would I want to, you know, uh, jeopardize my integrity from that perspective? But, you know, networking means so much to so many different people. So how often are you networking now in this kind of, you know, hybrid situation until we get kind of back to normal? Um, you know, do you find yourself on a Zoom call a couple times a week or what's your, what's your current situation with that? Definitely. Um, so at least twice a week, I'm on a networking call, at least, okay. if not more. Okay. Um, different groups, depending on whether they're paid or not. Um, the Waukesha County Business Alliance, I am on different networking opportunities with them. Yep. Um, Rely Local is another um, networking. Um, I belong to, I believe, five, six different networking groups. Okay, gotcha. Yes. Whether so, they be, oh, excuse me, whether no, they no, be, jump in. whether they be monthly, whether it be semi, you know, twice a week or okay. excuse me, twice a month okay. um, or even weekly. So, yep, gotcha. depending on them. And so I, the question that I'm still kind of wrestling with is when you have 20 and now we, we're talking, whether it's on Zoom or in person. You know, when you walk in, I, I, the vast majority of people that I coach or encounter don't have any type of goal set, you know, for that, for that meeting. So we've been practicing on Fridays and trying to explain to people that, hey, you know what, there's, there's walk away with something other than, you know, just checking off that I did this, right? If you don't have a real solid next step for something. So I'm wondering from your perspective, Karina, if you have any you know, how do you take 
the people, the, the networking event and turn it into a sale. And again, I know that that's relationship building and I know it can be a very long process, but is, how, how do you make that leap? Because I think most people struggle with that spot. They go to a networking event or they jump on a Zoom call, they participate, they see all these people on there and they're like, oh my gosh, what do I do, right? How do I, how do I take that next step? So do you have any insight for, for the listeners as far as what you do to, to, to bridge that gap from sitting on two networking calls a week, let's say, how do you convert that into business for the people that are return on investment minded? You need to give in order to get. Okay. That's my huge, huge call okay. is when you're networking, you have to think about how can I help this person? That's exactly what I do. Anytime I'm either A on a Zoom call or B, I'm in a room full of people sure. and I meet someone. I immediately, tell me about yourself and what are you looking for? And I'm co constantly thinking, okay, I know this person, this person, this person who can definitely cool. be of value and yeah. I connect them. I'll go back to the office and I'll do an introduction email awesome. and have both of them on there and, and introduce them. <laughs> definitely. That's yep. so cool. We just yeah. did last, I think it was last Friday, we did our top 10 most wanted list. Was that, I think that was last Friday or Monday. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, talking to, to sales professionals and we were doing poll questions and one of them was, do you have a top 10 list? And so some people did, you know, of prospects, top 10 prospects. Some people did, some people didn't. Well, there was one individual on the call that didn't have it. So she ended up creating her top 10. And then she calls me or, or um, on LinkedIn. She says, hey, I see you're connected to so-and-so. Um, would you mind making an introduction for me? He's on my top 10 list. So I'm like, oh my gosh, absolutely. So, and this was actually this morning. Um, and so I make the connection via email to both of them. They both replied to all. And now all of a sudden there's a relationship started, whether it goes anywhere, I'm not involved in that. All I do is make that connection. So I love that to me is like nothing, nothing gets me more stoked than a day when I'm able to like connect one person with another. So, yes. you know, and, and the cool part is, is I'm learning to do it. You know, part of me wants to get something out of it. I'd be completely vulnerable and say, you know what, there is a, a part of me that wants to get something for giving. But more and more, it's becoming just giving to be able to give. And I don't know if it's because I'm getting older or what, but, you know, I'm changing that um, about me. So when you're giving and you can, you know, share if you want, is there in your mind, is there like that a little chunk in the back that you're looking for something in return? Or do you just purely give to give without any anticipation of return? I love that feeling of being able to help someone. So that yeah. is definitely my, my take back, cool. my takeaway. If I can help somebody, man, let me tell you. Yeah. yeah, that that just makes my entire day. That's so cool. If, if I can help someone. I mean, yeah, would it be awesome to get a client out of it? Yeah, that's yeah. just an extra bonus. Yeah. But for me, I absolutely love to help people. So if I can <laughs> connect them, I'm going to connect them. And I think that's really, um, I, I don't want to labor that point, but I think it's worth bringing up for people that are listening that do receive something from somebody else. You know, you get a referral from somebody, you know, it's not like you got to give them money. It's not like you got to do anything, but boy, I tell you what, that appreciation, some way, shape or form of saying, Hey, I really appreciate what you did. Thank you so much for that. That just kind of is like the, the whip whipped cream on the hot fudge Sunday because I'm already stoked, right? That this happened. And I'm like, and I've gotten people jobs. I've got people have sold, you know, I mean, there's just been all this stuff that's gone on in my 30 some years of doing this. And I love seeing that. Um, but when they come back around Karina and say, thank you. And they are, you know, when somebody says, I couldn't have done this without you, I don't know. There's just something that's like, oh my gosh, <laughs> I can't help it. it. Like, you know, it's like, oh, I got to say, I got to jump in, you know, and get, get pretty stoked about that. So definitely. Um, I actually, when I, 
So the beginning of my career, I was all in the personal ins lines insurance, so okay. selling the auto, the home, and whatnot. So anytime that I would receive a referral from anybody, I would send them a ten dollar gas card. Gotcha. Thank you. Sure, sure. Whether I sell the business or not, because that truly means a lot to me that right. I'm trusted and and they trust me with every all their insurance. Yeah. Um, as far as business wise, yeah, I mean that's huge. Um, I'll send depending on anything. I, I send them a card, at least a card, yeah. um, saying thank you. I will also say thank you on LinkedIn or whatnot. So or send them a message. Awesome, and that's um, I, I was looking on your website and I noticed that you guys are a BBB accredited business. So yes, you know you kind of. All of a sudden, now you're looking at your you, the credibility starts to rise. You know the integrity starts to rise, and and I want to surround myself with people that are kind of like minded. You know, if I have to, and I don't mind training, teaching, coaching, mentoring. I don't mind that. Um, I do struggle with people that fight me constantly on it. You know, I mean, if you're going to fight me constantly, it's like, you know what, I, I don't really want to, no <laughs> yep. offense. I mean, you might be great, right? But it's just like, ah, oh, do I want to invest that energy? You know, there's so much, there's only so much energy we have in a day. Yeah. And so it's like, how much do I want to invest in somebody that's, you know, like bucking the system at every way? And it's one thing if you don't know it, if you're not aware, you know, I always ask myself, are, is this a blind spot that somebody's not aware of? Or, you know, like that guy that came up to me with a half inch of cards. Was that yeah. a blind spot for him? Or was that just, many people have said, dude, that's disrespectful. And he says, I don't care, I'm doing it anyway. You know, again, no right or wrong to it. It's just, I'm trying to align myself you know, with people that are like-minded. And that's why I so appreciate you hanging out with us on the show because, you know, I felt that same situation of, you know, giving is so important um, for you. And, and then I see the BBB that, you know, accreditation there. And then I kind of look even further on your website and see there's a big chunk of um, testimonials. So yes. all, now all of a sudden on your website, and if you're listening today and you don't have testimonials on your website and, and you sell to people, I would highly suggest that you do that. How do you get those, you know, from people? Because so many times I have people say, I don't want to ask, I don't know how to do it. You know, how do you get a testimonial from somebody from your website? Well, there's a couple or, of different ways. Okay. Yep, a couple of different ways. We'll either A, ask. Okay. Um, for testimonials, um, or uh, we actually have a program that we um, belong to, Rocket Referrals, oh, and okay. yep, emails go out, and they will they will send those. Um, anytime we actually, as a business, um, anytime we receive a, an email from one of our clients saying thank you, you did a great job, you did, you know, sure. We couldn't have done it without you. Yeah. We actually put that in our system as a, what we call a wowster. Uh, we want to recognize those employees who have done a great job. Okay. And yeah, definitely. And it's it's brought to the attention on on our monthly meetings. So. Yeah. Wow, that's cool. So what, tell me a little bit about Rocket Referrals so that if anyone's interested, they can kind of unpack that a little bit. Is that some, is that an outside service that helps you with your referrals or what, what do they do? It is an outside service. Um, I, I know that there's a, a fee for that. Don't okay. know anything. Don't know much about sure. the Rocket Referrals just okay. because of the fact that I'm not into the marketing okay. aspect of that. However, sure. they do send out emails okay to the clients oh nice uh, and, okay. yep and in regards that on your behalf right correct okay that is correct nice. yes and there'll be um different types of emails sent out hey it's it's you know flood season have you thought about flood insurance and um different aspects as far okay. as that goes different types of of coverage questions so all the rain that we just got in the last couple of weeks, the nine inches or so. <laughs> yes. <laughs> River's finally going down. More? Is your phone <laughs> ringing more for flood insurance now? 
No, no. Okay. But insurance is very expensive, um, okay. depending sure. on if you're in a floodplain or not. Gotcha, gotcha. So um, I want to ask you a question as we kind of start to come in for a landing on this today. Um, one of the questions that I run into is like setting, how do you set yourself apart from all these other companies that provide what in their mind, provide what you provide, or from me, I'm a layman. So one insurance company is like the next in, in my mind. You know, I know that from a business perspective that that's not necessarily true, but you know, most people are like, okay, how do I determine that? So when you, um, you know, look at your business, how do you set yourself apart from, from all the other people that are out there? That is an awesome question. We actually have risk management tools that we offer to okay. our clients at no cost to them. Okay. We have a success plan that we provide to each and every single one of our clients. What that involves is how much do they want us involved? How much risk do they have? Okay. So we could either meet monthly with a client to go over any type of training, whether it be anti-harassment training, um, getting on a, um, climbing a ladder properly, um, bloodborne pathogens, um, any, any type of risk management training that they would need. Like I said, either monthly, some want to just meet quarterly, some want to just meet every six months. Sure. So uh, definitely, and those risk management tools are amazing. Um, I, I've helped so many of my clients being able to do that, um, being able to go on to this risk management tool and finding the information that they need. It's not just the risk management, it's HR. Do they, they have questions in regards to human resources? Um, we have that for them. So the risk management tools, are those found on your website then? Or how do they, how would a listener get access to those? Um, they can actually reach out to us and we can provide them with the okay. risk management um, library and show them how it all works. And there is a video on that as well. There's a video for everything now, right? You got it. <laughs> <laughs> so much easier, just click a button, you know? So Yes, yes. That's cool. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think of Midwest Express, the airline that we have, we used to have in Milwaukee and now they're trying to bring back and, you know, they always had such a great following, you know, because like about 20, 25 minutes before we land, we're sitting there enjoying life. And then all of a sudden you kind of get a whiff of a chocolate chip cookie and it's like, what the heck, you know, and they're baking chocolate chip cookies on the, sh on the ship, on the flight. <laughs> You know, and all yep. of a sudden they're walking down and they're giving them to you. And it's just like, this couldn't get any better. Right. So they, you know, in my mind, I always ask my clients and people that I talk to, you know, what's your cookie? What are you doing that nobody else is doing? Because no one else in the industry has ever really, in my mind that I know of, ever had that type of service where they bake chocolate chip cookies. And this wasn't even for just for first class. They didn't even have first class. Everybody had two across to a cross leather seating. So it was always uh, first class there, which was fantastic. So when you think of ANSI and Associates and think of what their cookie is, what is it that you're doing in your mind and, and that nobody else is doing? Is it the risk management tools or is there something else that you tend to see that you're doing that um, other people aren't doing? Great question. Like I said, I think it is the risk management tools. Okay whether it be risk management, the safety, um, safety management. I mean, we, we want to make sure that the work related injuries are down. We educate our, our business owners on what to look for, how to um, reduce their claims, reduce the risk of claims, reduce the risk of work related injuries. We want to make sure that we keep, keep them involved and, um, I want to be involved with my business owners. Sure. I don't want to just say, here's your policy and right. walk away. Right. I want to be able to help them. And that's an awesome feeling when you can actually go and, and, and help them with 
anything that they have, whether it be how do I read a certificate of insurance to um, an anti-harassment training, right. you know, it's, yeah. it's big. Wow. So I'm totally drawn to this anti-harassment training because you brought it up twice. So I'm like, oh my gosh, right? What does that mean? So yeah. tell us, what does anti-harassment training mean? I, I got oh, it. yes. So there's all kinds of different uh, harassment in, in the workplace, whether it be sexual harassment, um, somebody, uh, third party, uh, single party, it, it is, it's, if someone is literally talking, I can give you examples because that's just how I work. Yeah, for sure. That's just easier for me yeah, to, to explain that. Yeah, for sure. So, so if I am in the office and um, I am, let's just say, the receptionist, mm -hmm. um, obviously some other workers coming up to me and, and not even, it doesn't even have to be a sexual uh, harassment. It, let's just say that they are constantly bugging me about my weight. Sure. I'm too heavy, too sure. too skinny, whatnot. Yeah. yeah. And that keeps on building. And my company does not do anything about that. I can sure. actually go against the company and and sue the company for that. Wow. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's just first party. Third party is in the event. Let's just say if I am the receptionist and um, the UPS driver comes in and starts right. harassing. Oh, There's your wow. third party. Sure. So yeah, it's, it's quite interesting. Sure. Yeah. Wow. That's yeah. So right away, cause I do conflict resolution training where two people are usually sitting on either side of me and they really can't uh, stand each other. And we have to kind of work through this because they have to court, you know, they got to collaborate every day or, or close to it. So sure. So the anti, anti-harassment, oh my gosh, we got a name for everything, eh? That's yes. so cool, cool. So I have two more questions for you. Yes. Number one, uh, they're both um, non-business related, so you can um, you know, um, answer as you feel comfortable, but you had mentioned that you were contemplating starting your own podcast. So fill yes. us in on, on what your thoughts are there. I definitely wanna, I wanna begin that. Um, so I literally have a little notebook and uh, one, the first page is what, what names do I want to call my podcast? Sure. So I started with that. Good. Um, and then I've already had, I already um, started a different um, writing down a different couple episodes that I oh, always, nice. already want to do. Cool. So I really, really think that that would be great. Again, I want to highlight people. Sure. And what they do. Sure. Okay. Um, that really is important to me to be able to just go down the street to my community baker um, or the chamber or a restaurant. Yeah. And my thing that I absolutely love is to learn people's passions. Sure. I love to find out why are you in this business? Yeah. What what gets you up in the morning? Sure, sure. Oh, so, yeah, it's it's fun. I really enjoy people. I absolutely love people. Awesome. This this pandemic has been very hard for me because I love yeah. to interact <laughs> with people. So yes, yep. but yeah, the podcast I think would would definitely be fun. Excellent. Um, yeah. So have you you have you landed on a name yet or no? I have a couple. Okay. Um, so one of them being Karina's Corner. Nice. is one of them cool. um i was also thinking about different things to to bring the insurance terms in okay um but i don't know if i want to go there yeah i don't know if i want to really go into the sure. the you know the insurance world because it's not always going to be about insurance right sure so well, i was yeah. drawn to your little book so i'm like my gosh the little black book or some crazy thing i was like that would be kind of cool so well keep us posted on that on how Thank that you. works um be happy to help any way that i can and Thank then you. the last question is so what's one thing that most people don't know about you that you feel comfortable sharing oh i'm an open book um <laughs> <laughs> i am definitely an open book um hmm that is a very good question and what people don't know about me one thing that people don't know about me is um 
I had some extensive surgery when I was very, very young where um, my father could literally place his whole fist in the cave of my chest. So I had to have my a surgery done and uh, a, and a bar, a bar was literally put into my chest and I could not do anything for a year physically. Oh my so gosh. No running, no bike riding. And oh when you're gosh. a first grader, six years old, yeah, no kidding. You want to do that kind of thing. Yeah, so no kidding. Wow. So like a metal bar? Yeah. I actually still have it. Isn't that weird? <laughs> so do you like do you set the thing off at the TSA at the airport, well, obviously? No, no, no. So they so after the year, after it it Oh, okay. went back to shape then i had another surgery to remove it oh, great well that's good so you don't set the tsa nope. security <laughs> off all right good well that's good more, it's a weird more one, people but... are setting that thing off with all the plates <laughs> and stuff that are going on oh yes oh my gosh well um, so you recovered fully and uh all's yep. well that ends well good and you yes. still have the bar so maybe that can be tied into your podcast somehow that's awesome yeah cool. didn't think of that that's awesome What's the best way for um, anybody that's listening that wants to get in contact with you? What's the best way for them to do that? Um, I would say either A, email. Okay. So Karina.Kretschmer at ANSAY.com. You want to spell that you, for people, just for sure. the listeners? Of course. It is C-O-R-I-N-A dot K-R-E-T-S-C-H. M E R at ANSAY, A N S A Y dot com. Perfect. You can also find me on LinkedIn and Facebook. Great. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Karina, for hanging out. Thanks for telling me about the bar. Now I'm going to have to like do some research on, we got to come up with a way to use that in your podcast name. So um, that would be I, awesome. I appreciate everything. Thanks for sharing some um, ideas on the insurance. And thanks again for opening up. Um, you know, your life to us. We typically look at business and personal. We try and find that intersection where they both are. And that's really where we live on a daily basis. So it really helps. I'm sure there'll be uh, some good value that people learn from this today. Um, you know, feel free to reach out to Karina if you have any questions on anything that she talked about. And as always, um, listen to all the podcasts that you can and hopefully we'll be adding Karina's to the list here in the near future and with that we will say goodbye any last words Karina for for the audience that's uh been enjoying your with their time with you just keep going keep trucking and have a lot of patience awesome cool yes thank you very very much Dave. absolutely for Th thanks for everything and we'll talk to you soon sounds great thank you